Tech out here. Today we're going to be building a 3D printed PC. I guess I said a 3D printed PC. I modeled this up in Blender and then used Cura, printed it out on a pretty cheap 3D printer. In fact, I got the printer for $250 for Black Friday. So I'll put the links below where to get it. It's not a perfect print, but it works. I'm quite satisfied with the $250 printer, but made a mini ITX case. That's the dimensions online, modeled it up. And we're going to put together today. For this build, we're going to use uh, Intel G4400 uh, Pentium processor. Now this is pretty cheap, pick it up about 60 bucks. Now why I picked this is because it has onboard graphics. You could have used the 6600K, 6700K, uh, or you could even wait till KB Lake comes out and you could build you a pretty nice mini PC. The idea of this build was I wanted to make it as compact as possible. There are a lot of cases out there that have a small footprint, but I wanted to print one. Now why is that? Well, in an upcoming video, I'm going to show you how to print a computer case that is extremely small that fits a GPU too. So stay tuned for more videos to see that one. This next build is actually going to have a GTX, either a GTX 970 Mini or a GTX 1070 Mini which is pretty cool considering uh, you can make these things so small. And I'll show you how to do it. You may be thinking, hey, the power supply is bigger than that. Well, I'm going to show you how to get around the constraints of a big power supply uh, using some maybe unconventional methods, but we'll make it work. Again, next build we're going to do is going to have uh, either a 970 or 1070 in it in this little box, plus a mini ITX X99 board with potentially uh, 22 cores. So find out here in a couple of weeks what goes on in that build. But for today, we're just building a simple onboard graphics PC. Be good for uh, media streaming, uh, home theater use, even light computing. I'm actually going to edit the video uh, on this PC I built today. And then we'll compare it later on to uh, a larger X99 build in a small footprint case like this. All right, motherboard using Asus H110 uh, Intel chipset, pretty basic, pretty cheap. Uh, you can pick these up, I'll put the links below. Pretty simple motherboard. Again, G4400. Now how do we power this thing? Well, for this particular build, we're gonna use what's known as a Pico power supply. This has almost 200 watts peak. Um, basically, uh, this is your 24 pin connector and the majority of the power supply is right there. So it is small, compact, and it'll fit in these small builds. Now how am I gonna power an X99 machine? Well, if you see how much power an X99 machine draws, you'll notice that one of these with a GPU is probably not gonna be enough. Well, we're gonna use two, maybe three of these in our high-end compact build, and I'm going to show you how to connect those together. Uh, but today we're just going to use one. Um, pretty simple to use. This just plugs right in your 24-pin connector. You've got an extra 4-pin connector, and then you've got uh, Molex and some uh, SATA connectors. So you have everything you need for a simple PC. All right, let's put this together. All right, first thing you're going to do after you print out this case, I'm going to put links below. Uh, to my website, uh, help support our channel. You can download all the schematics ready to print for this for $10. Again, all the schematics, just print it out. Uh, it'll be $10. Uh, what's cool about this is um, you're only using five or 600 grams of uh, PLA. It might take a couple tries, but uh, I'm gonna include uh, in the links below some tips on how to print this so hopefully you can get it done the first time and you know cost you less than ten dollars to print first thing you're going to do is you're going to put in your io shield uh, and once you do that gently set the motherboard in that way you can mark where to drill your holes to put in your standoffs you can get standoffs on the internet pretty cheap i'll put some links below to show you where to get those so pop your io shield in This may be a little bit tight of fit for you, especially if uh, your PLA warps any. Um, I'll put some tips below to how to how to mitigate that problem. All right, you got your IO shield in. 
you got your standoffs in. So let's get our power supply ready to go. It's a little bit easier to put this uh, Pico power supply on before you drop in the case. So again, 24 pin connector. You just uh, plug it right in. All right, next, you're gonna wanna plug in your four pin connector. Now before you plug, uh, you put this motherboard in, you're going to want to drill a hole in your case to fit uh, the end of the Pico power supply. Now this just will go through your hole and then you just put this lock nut on the end uh, so it doesn't pop out. So you can either put this in the rear or front of your case depending on where you want to put your uh, laptop brick. Now how this works is the Pico power supply just uses a laptop brick. Uh, 12 volts, uh, the bigger the more uh, watts you have, the more power you have available for your Pico power supply. Okay, you're also going to want to drill some more holes. What for? Well, you're going to need to have a switch for your power. Um, what you want to get, I'll put a link below, is a non-latching switch. It's simply just like uh, shorting across the two power pins on your motherboard. That's all a regular power switch does. And this one even has LED in it if you want to use it. Do not get one of these that stays down because you'll forget and you'll leave it down and the computer will just keep starting and shutting off. So you'll want a non-latching switch to drill a hole and then you can just put the little a retaining screw on there and it'll fit just perfectly. Or another option is, and I did this because I already have one of these laying around, is you can just get one of these with a sticky pad with the button and it already has all of your uh, ATX uh, power switch, LEDs, all that stuff, and you can just stick that to the top of the case. That looks kind of tacky, but it's a cheap solution, uh, and it works. All right, once you get your holes and whatnot, uh, go ahead and install your CPU, cooler. I got my 16 gigs of RAM in here, and just go ahead and stick it in the case. Pretty self-explanatory. Just line it up with the IO shield. Drop it in. All right, next thing to do. Uh, is go ahead and put in your motherboard uh, standoff screws. It really helps to have a magnetic screwdriver. Now the schematics you, uh, the schematics you can download for $10 will, will be ready to go. Just print it out, pop your IO shield in. Now you may, if, you're, um, if your PLA warps a little bit, you don't have your setting quite right, um, you can just make the case just a little bit bigger. It won't hurt. It'll make the IO shield fit a little bit better. Plus, for the most part, the IO shield's held in by the motherboard on the other side anyway, so just keep that in mind. All right, we got our screws in. Um, just using a simple laptop hard drive here, you get you a solid state drive, make it even better. Uh, or you can get you an M.2 motherboard uh, and get you something like a Samsung 950 or something if you're going really fast. Today we're just using a simple hard drive. This is going to be used, uh, well, to edit this video and maybe for home theater PC. Alright, next you're going to make your uh, SATA connections. Now, this iteration of the case, um, uh, just a two and a half inch drive will just fit right on the side here. Uh, you're also going to want to connect your just your regular SATA power connector. Drop that drive right there on the side. Uh, there's enough extra loose wires in this build where you can actually just put those wires up against the hard drive and it'll stay pretty well in place because it actually slides in the slot. Uh, there's a space between the motherboard and the case where it just fits perfectly so it doesn't really flop around any. Okay, next you're going to work on your cable management. Get you some zip ties, it really helps out. Now the biggest thing is this Intel cooler fan doesn't really have much of a shroud around it, so make sure you don't get your wires down in the fan. Again, this connector here, simply drill a hole of the size of the connector, stick it through, and then you're just going to spin that nut on the end. Just like that. And that is where the connector from your 12 volt laptop brick is going to go. Alright, we've 
essentially got everything in there right now except I haven't wired up the power switch. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect uh, the power into this and then I'm going to run it through one of the holes, the vent holes I made for the lid. And simply close it up. You can orient this lid any direction you want. So here we go. Here's the backside. Power supply port. This particular motherboard has onboard graphics, USB 3.0. You can put this lid in the power button any direction you want. Or you can just rotate this lid any way you want. Just make sure the wires don't get down to the fan. That's the biggest thing. So here we have 3D printed computer. I mean, here's a mini graphics card. Not much bigger. So this is a pretty small form factor. Small form factor, not very big. Put this in a backpack. In fact, to show you how small this is, this is the box for the CPU. I mean, really, it's not that much bigger. Again, you can get the schematics um, ready to print for your computer. Uh, it's an STL file and also a Blender file. Check it out on our website. You can download this case. Uh, support our site. Ten dollars and less than ten dollars of PLA, and you got you a mini ITX case with the blender file you can also edit it if you want to so if you want to engrave your name or whatever on the case you're good to go and check out here in a couple of weeks we're going to build uh, a case that's going to fit both a gtx 1070 or maybe a 970 i don't know yet and an x99 uh, board with at least six cores we will show you how to do that with multiple pico power supplies connected together thanks make sure to like and subscribe